What is happening guys? Mike here, welcome back to the channel. Today I got a pretty cool video planned for you. We're gonna be taking a look at a UK based brand called Duke and Hyde. Now today's video should not only be cool for you guys because we're taking a look at their line and what they offer, but I'm also gonna be giving you guys my thoughts on a very interesting question you guys brought to me regarding this brand's similarities to another UK based brand by the name of Black Label Grooming. We got a lot to talk about today and we're gonna get all into it starting right now. So before we get started, y'all are gonna have to excuse my voice. I got a little bit of raspiness going on. I got this cold that's decided to just move on in rent free and hang around. Doesn't seem to wanna go away. But I am gonna do my best for you guys here today and we are talking again about Duke and Hyde. Other than being from the UK, I honestly don't know much about this brand. They don't have a lot of info on their site about their backstory, but I did have a few emails back and forth with them and they seem like pretty nice folks. This video is not paid or sponsored or anything like that, but they of course sent me over three products to get a look at with you guys. And while we're on the subject of those three products, we're also gonna be talking about how they might relate, if at all, to the products from Black Label Grooming. You guys have been asking me for quite a while now if there's a possibility that these products could be white label, which personally I think would be pretty funny considering their name is Black Label. No? Anybody? Anyone with eyeballs can see that there's obviously some similarities here, but what exactly does that mean? Before I answer that though, I think it's only fair that we get a closer look at these products, get a look at their specs and how they style. Here we go. Coming across my desk today is three products from the UK based brand, Duke and Hyde. I had many questions about this brand and their products as you already know. To answer those questions fairly and honestly, I felt I had to first get a full look at the products this brand offers. Starting first with the Hybrid Clay. According to the brand, the Hybrid Clay is a clay wax combination product that offers a maximum hold, matte finish, and all day style control. It's also said to be water soluble and totally flexible in the hair. For the scent, it's listed as a watermelon, peach, and papaya scent, and it comes in a 1.75 5 ounce black plastic jar for approximately 2135 US. Looking inside the jar we're met with a very specific looking dark product. It's very thick looking but surprisingly once you scoop it out and begin to spread it into the hands it breaks down very smooth. The tack and stickiness is also very apparent here as I break it down. Moving on to the power paste. Again according to the brand their power paste is a water soluble extreme hold and matte finish product that's designed for all hair types but specifically works well for thick hair according to to their site. It also features a sweet marshmallow scent and comes in the same 1.75 ounce black plastic jar for the same price of $21.35 US. Looking inside the jar here we have a product that's very creamy in appearance. At first look it has more in common with a cream than a paste. Obviously this makes scooping it out very easy and interestingly enough as I break it down in my hand I don't actually feel hardly any tack or stickiness. Now on to the demos. Let's start first here with the hybrid clay. I'm using this today on dry hair, which with it being a clay is the obvious choice. With it being so smooth coming out of the jar, I was really expecting a smooth application and for the most part it is. There is a bit of tug going on there, but really the only major barrier I saw here was that it seemed to firm up pretty quickly. This was something I was really not expecting, but nevertheless, after some strong finger combing, I was able to get a decent style out of it. Switching gears now to the power paste. And with a reset on the hair, we're ready to see what this one's all about. Remembering that it scoops out with such a creamy and slick consistency, I don't think I was fully prepared for this at all. Once this stuff hit my hair, I couldn't believe how much stickiness ended up coming out. This is straight up glue right now, and while that's great for hold, it's not great for the roots of my follicles. It does have some pretty gnarly tug going on here, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't also very workable. It's actually pretty responsive to my fingers here, and also very similar to the clay, after all a long bit of finger combing, we are able to get a final style.
Now, Duke and Hyde also sent me one other product to share with you guys, and that's their beard oil. Their beard oil actually contains some really good ingredients. It's got some grapeseed oil in there, some jojoba oil, sunflower oil, a lot of really good things that's really good for the skin and the beard. And the way that I use these is pretty simple. I put a couple drops in my hand and I run it through the beard. It stops the beard from feeling so scratchy and itchy, and it actually conditions the skin underneath the beard which is also really important. Just like with most beard oils too, you can actually just take the uh, leftover beard oil from your face and beard and actually just run it through your hair too. It actually makes for a really good hair tonic as well. That's something, that, that's something that I do pretty frequently. So I do think this one was actually pretty good. I really enjoyed using that one. It's got a nice scent on it too. But now let's talk about endurance with our two stylers here, starting with the clay, which I have to say I was very surprised at and not in the usual way, I'm afraid. I was really hoping that some texture and volume would come out a bit as it settled, but as we can see here at the four hour mark, things look pretty much the same as they did when we finished styling. And at the eight hour mark, we can see that it's lost a little bit of that overall presence in the hair. It's gotten a bit loose in the style, but it's still responding to restyling, so that's good. Moving on to the power paste, which I think overall worked a little bit better for me, but it still had its share of issues. At the four hour mark, we can see that not much change has occurred in the style. I do think that some hold has started lifting, and at the eight hour mark, we can see that, yeah, it started lifting because really, well, yeah, it's pretty much down for the count here as far as hold goes. Again, though, that was eight hours in, so that's technically not that bad. We have seen some products not even last that long with holds, so that could be judged either way. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Let's talk about this whole deal between them and Black Label. Let me say first that I have not yet reviewed any products from Black Label Grooming, but I do have them. I have used them, so I am familiar with them, and that's what I use to make this comparison. And I really really think that the basis of this confusion here is based on how similar these brands are, and I think some people also have a pretty big confusion over the term white label. A white label product is a formula that can be purchased by anyone and sold by anyone with the cash. So for example, a lab makes a formula and then they put it in their catalog of available formulas, and then someone like user me browses the catalog and then buys that formula as is and makes no changes to it whatsoever, and then slaps a label label on it and sells it to the public. Then another brand comes along, sees that same formula and does the same thing, and now we have multiple brands selling the same formula. This is exactly the case for brands like Pete and Pedro and Mr. Pompadour. But the big exception here is changing the formula. As soon as any sort of change happens within that formula, hold strength, shine level, whatever, then that formula becomes a custom formulation. Also nowadays, a lot of brands have the rights to their formula, so the lab making it couldn't actually sell it to any other brands. The easiest way to tell if a product is white label is to compare the products side by side. Everything will be the same, scent, consistency, and the most obvious thing, the ingredients on the jar will be the same. Looking at these two brands right next to each other, I can see why you guys are curious. They are pretty much the exact same jar, and the labels printed on the jars have very similar designs. Looking at the clay specifically though, the suspicion is even worse here, because if I didn't tell you which one was which, you really wouldn't be able to tell. But it all boils down to that one thing that really answers this question indefinitely, and that's the ingredients, which are not the same for these clays and for the paste. I've compared the ingredients one by one, and with the clays, they have a lot of the same ingredients, but ultimately the lists differ in a few ways, telling us that the formulas are in fact different. I did also ask Duke and Hyde about this prior to accepting the review, because as you know, I will not willingly or knowingly feature white label products on this channel. They did get back to me right away saying they were not in any way affiliated with Black Label Grooming. Black Label Grooming actually hasn't responded to emails from me in months, so I can't actually tell you what they have to say because well, they don't reply. My personal thoughts here though is that these products have to be made by the same lab. There's just too many similarities here in the production for that not to be the case in some way or another. I think there definitely has to be some kind of connection here, but does that make them white label? Absolutely not. They are not white label. The formulas are in fact different, which means at least right now they are brand exclusive, and I don't have any info to suggest otherwise right now. Now if at some point I do discover further info that suggests otherwise, I will absolutely 
absolutely update you guys. But when it comes down to these guys and what I know right now, that's what I've concluded. Now, which one's better? That's not really for me to say. Each one has their pros and cons with their products. And I, I think to be fair, I will have to do a full look into black label products to determine how they stack up at a later time. All right, this is going on much longer than expected. Let's just wrap this up now. Washout on these products was pretty easy to describe. The paste came out with just water, just straight up came out. But the clay, this one actually didn't want to leave my hair. I had to do about two rounds of shampoo to get the overall feeling of the product out of my hair. My final thoughts here on these two guys is I think both of the products have some good qualities and some that were kind of problematic for me. I do have to tell you, I, I just feel like the price is kind of a big cloud over top this brand right now. With them being over $20 for 1.75 ounces, that's just pretty steep for me. And for the price, I felt myself wanting more out of the clay than I think I got. I do have to say the pace kind of ranked a little bit higher for me, although I don't fully agree with the fact that it's really great for people with super thick hair. I think you folks with thin hair are really going to love the crap out of this one though, if you decide you want to give it a chance. It's just that really dry and sticky application that I just don't really see people with thick hair enjoying. I do hope though that this gives you guys a good enough look to decide for yourself if you want to try these products out for not. That's always my overall goal here, to give you guys enough info to then decide for yourself. Speaking of trying out these products, if you are interested in checking out anything from the Duke and Hyde lineup, I will be putting links in the description for you guys to check out. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop me a like and a comment down below. And as always, make sure if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that button for me. It's a huge help to me. And just a reminder, once we hit that 25,000, subscriber goal, we will be having a huge giveaway for you guys. The biggest we have seen yet on this channel. But that is it for today. I want to thank so much for stopping by the channel today and checking out this video. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.